In this video, I'm going to examine two roadway design alternatives side by side to give a real world example of my patented parallel flow intersection compared to a traditional design. On the left is a design alternative currently proposed by the Iowa Department of Transportation. And on the right, at the same location, is the parallel flow intersection, or PFI. I'm focusing here on a small but important section of the larger project to demonstrate the PFI's potential effectiveness. The larger project is to reconstruct the interchange at I-80 and State Route 141 in Des Moines. It's currently in the study phase, and the next step is Federal Highway's approval of the DOT's preferred alternative. According to the DOT's Interchange Justification Report, or IJR, the purpose of the project is to add capacity and improve safety at the interchange. I've included a link to the IJR document in the description box below this video. The DOT district engineer graciously spoke with me not long ago about the project and allowed me the opportunity to show him my design alternative using the PFI. I told him I estimate the PFI will save over $15 million in construction at the interchange as well as produce other important benefits. I'll summarize in this video. The existing interchange is a five ramp bolted diamond that the IJR indicates is expected to fail due to congestion in the future, resulting in higher crash rates on the freeway. The current preferred DOT design is identified in the IJR as Alternative 2. The major changes proposed by the DOT alternative are to remove the existing loop ramps, move two ramp movements to Meredith Drive, and construct a two-lane I-80 eastbound flyover ramp to 141 northbound. Two important poor conditions result. One is to create what is called a split interchange by moving the two ramps to Meredith Drive. This is pretty undesirable since it will require wayfinding signage and adds traffic to a secondary road the IJR indicates will operate at level service F in the future without capacity improvements. The other is to produce a two-sided weave on 141 northbound between the flyover ramp and 37th Street intersection. The PFI alternative I've proposed to the DOT avoids the undesirable split interchange by retaining the existing loop ramps to maintain all existing traffic movements. The design involves converting the existing eastbound ramp intersection to a PFI and keeping the westbound ramp a standard intersection with additional lanes. The IJR indicates that crashes mostly occur at the existing loop ramps on the main line where drivers are accelerating to enter the freeway or decelerating to exit. I propose to mitigate these crashes by moving the axel and decel lanes onto their own bridges to physically separate them from the mainline freeway lanes. The other crash location at the interchange is the eastbound ramp intersection at 141 due to congestion. By converting it to the more efficient PFI, congestion at the intersection will be eliminated and with it congestion related crashes. To see the full PFI interchange simulation, use the link in the description box below. The intersection of 141 at 37th Street north of the interchange is a good candidate for a partial PFI and the focus of this video. The DOT alternative proposes to keep the traditional four-phase signal with additional lanes, but the partial PFI will be much more efficient than the traditional signal and cost far less than the grade separation likely required by the flyover ramp in the future. I've included a link to the full partial PFI simulation at 37th Street below. The end of the two-lane flyover ramp is shown at the bottom of the left video pane in brown. This is the ramp gore where the ramp converges with the two lanes of 141 northbound. This is the point where the traffic weave begins. There's approximately 1,100 feet from the gore to the stop bar at the 37th Street intersection. Because drivers will be able to turn left or right at the intersection, a more severe two-sided weave condition will be created by the flyover ramp. 141 northbound drivers will have to change lanes to the right to turn right, and left-turning drivers on the flyover ramp have to do the same maneuver to the left, and these conflicting movements will be happening at the same time. 
The turn lanes at the intersection are proposed to be 250 feet in length, reducing the weave distance to 850 feet. The posted speed for 141 is 50 miles per hour, with the 85th percentile speed assumed at 55. At this speed, drivers will have less than 10 seconds to safely change two lanes. Note the crisscrossing vehicles in the DOT alternative. And as bad as this condition looks in the simulation, we might see it worse in reality because the simulated drivers you're watching also have eyes in the back of their head, meaning they can detect vehicles ahead and behind simultaneously. Of course, human drivers can't. So for the human driver on the ramp going 55 miles per hour intending to turn left at 37th Street, she'll have to be in the left ramp lane, and while looking in her mirror or over her shoulder for a gap, she won't be aware the vehicles in front of her might have slowed down or even come to a full stop. And the 141 driver hoping to turn right will have to contend with the same challenge to the right side. Note the rolling queue of purple colored vehicles that over time moves from the stop bar to pass the ramp gore. Again, these vehicles are moving at a crawl or have stopped, which the approaching driver intending to turn at the intersection might not see when looking behind for the gap to change lanes. The left simulation suggests to me that this segment of 141 with the flyover ramp will experience a high crash rate with severe rear end crashes. I have to believe the DOT might not at this time appreciate the safety risk and maybe this video will bring awareness to a potential problem area with their alternative, regardless of their opinion on using the PFI here. But the PFI alternative on the right does show an orderly progression of vehicles traveling on 141. There's no weave condition and drivers will have over three quarters of a mile to safely change lanes, which is the situation at the interchange today. But maybe you think I'm cheating that I use less traffic for the PFI. Actually, there are 500 more vehicles per hour. I use the no build with no Northwest 100th Street interchange PM peak hour traffic from the IJR. This is the higher volume condition. The reason there's no queuing is because the partial PFI at 37th Street shown here is that much more efficient than the traditional signal on the left. And because there's no traffic weave and no excessive vehicle queuing, we should expect the PFI to be materially safer than the DOT alternative. And saving over 15 million on construction is an added benefit. That's enough money to construct a new interchange or convert multiple intersections that are congested today to PFIs. Unfortunately, the district engineer told me the DOT will not be considering any new alternatives at this time which could prove a costly missed opportunity for Iowa taxpayers and roadway users. But from personal experience, if the project isn't in construction, it's not too late to change to a clearly better alternative. I believe the PFI alternative is and should be considered as a value engineering proposal to avoid the split interchange, improve safety as illustrated by this video, and save the over $15 million estimated not including the high cost of grade separating 37th Street, likely necessary because of the flyover ramp. Since the project is still in the study phase, it seems to me there should be ample cause and time for the DOT to evaluate the PFI alternative properly, with which I'm happy to assist. Maybe after viewing this video, the DOT will reconsider its position. The PFI alternative I've proposed for this project can be expected to operate at a satisfactory level service C for both the interchange and 37th Street intersection through design year 2040, according to my VISM results. This means that by building the PFIs, the DOT can improve both the interchange and intersection with money left over in lieu of alternative 2 that only applies to the interchange and will create problems at the 37th Street intersection as this video shows. To grade separate 37th Street will be high cost with possible ramp braiding needed or result in just closing the intersection altogether. The PFI avoids these outcomes while saving many millions of dollars that can be used to fix congested locations elsewhere in the state. I hope you found this video informative. And I do thank the Iowa DOT district engineer for taking time to discuss their project with me. If you'd like more information on the parallel flow intersection, you can view other simulations on this channel, 
showing different PFI applications, or visit our resource page at gfparsons.com. Thanks for watching.